Good morning YouTube. Welcome to RV Daydream. We're doing another video from one of our favorite companies. This is, I believe, our fifth bike we've had with this company, Ingway. This one's the first step through that we've owned from this company that is not a folding step through. Let's take a look at this thing. What have you been up to? I've been riding on a daydream. Most of the stuff from Ingway, we've had pretty good luck with all of their bikes. I don't think that I've had one single problem with anything, and that's over, again, five bikes. And the funny thing is, the bike that we've had the longest is an Ingway. Uh, it's a, a folding bike that has a full suspension on it. And the other bikes that we just recently received from them, two of them have full suspensions and the other one has just front suspension and all of them ride so smooth and Ingway does one thing that most of them don't and that is provide you with decent power now us being US guys US people we like to have our bikes be able to handle our fat butts a little bit more at least I do and this company what they do is they allow the maximum amount of power to be sent to their bike it doesn't mean you're going to be doing necessarily 40 miles an hour. I will have to say, though, that every bike that we seem to get, no matter how big the battery, how powerful the motor, it seems like that they all top out about 20 miles an hour. And that's with overriding and doing all the P settings and doing whatever it takes to make it, uh, you know, change the parameters of the bike. Whereas these bikes that Ingway sends, they're at least doing 24 miles an hour and up to, Heidi's had one that she'd do 38 miles an hour. So it'll be nice to see what they've done with this one and uh, I'm excited to get it out. Now, because a lot of our bikes seem to be black, it seems like we always get black bicycles for some reason. I know this one's a white one. So let's go ahead and open this up. Take a look at the packaging, which is going to make a difference and I'll show you why. Look at that big gouge. That could be a problem. Let's see if it is. Okay. You guys have been familiar with watching us on these bike videos. We always try to show the packaging, what it looks like inside. Uh, this is pretty good, pretty standard. You have some uh, dense foam. You have some lightweight foam for some of the smaller items. Everything seems to be boxed up really well. Lots of wire ties. That's pretty traditional with a lot of these companies. You see we got some boxes here, accessories, battery, Get your keys. Looks pretty good. As always, packaged very well. Everything has survived the shipment uh, from wherever it may have originated from. I'm um, assuming that this did come from China uh, at some point, and uh, they did a very good job with it. A lot of people have asked me, well, would this fit in the back of my car if I pick it up at the UPS store or wherever it may get delivered? Um, you know, you can get it delivered to your home, obviously. Um, most of these bikes all have free shipping. Uh, this package here with the seats folded down and my wife's little Kia Seltos will fit just fine. Uh, no, no issues there. But just to let you know that the package is about 57 inches in length. And as far as the width, you're about 10 inches. And then 33 inches uh, in the height. So... If you're looking to measure the back of your car, if your car is a little bit smaller than the Seltos, um, that's what you got to look for. 57 by 10 by 32. Let's just say 32 because it's like 32 and a quarter. So uh, this is what comes out of it then. One thing you got to be concerned with, which um, just know that some of the styrofoam is recyclable. Uh, I don't think that any of this styrofoam is. Uh, but the cardboard, of course, that's recyclable. Please do so. That's why there's a, an emblem there that's uh, showing you the recycle emblem. They want to make sure that you have uh, everything going back and being uh, repurposed in one form or another. So now the, the job that I have here is cutting all the wire ties off. And uh, once I've done that, it'll allow me to bolt this thing together. Not, not a very difficult task. Uh, then we'll also take a look at what's in here. Um, there is a seat here. 
that I pulled out of the packaging. It looks very plush. It does have a quick release lever, and the reason is is because uh, the battery is behind the seat or underneath the seat. This here is just, uh, I'm sure, the charger and stuff. We'll, we'll take a look at that, and then I'll open this up and uh, see what kind of components are in there. But uh, I like the way that it looks so far. It reminds me of the uh, electric bikes, but the electric, of course, that's a folding bike. Um, I kind of like the idea that, in, in our case, uh, why would you want a non-folding bike? Well, that's uh, not everybody's traveling with them, and most of the time they're putting them on the rack. Listen, uh, the big secret out there as far as folding bikes, just to let you know, just because they fold down in size, all they do is change size. They don't change volume. So you still have the same amount of weight and the same amount of bike that needs to go into an area. The folding aspect of it just allows you to possibly do something a little bit different to get into that area. And what I mean is, when we had our fifth wheel, our folding bikes could go into the pass-through pretty easy. Uh, but they could go through even easier if I, we didn't even fold them. Other than the fact they took up more room lengthwise inside the pass-through, which we didn't necessarily have. So what we would do is fold them, and that way they took up more height, but not as long or deep into the pass-through. So take that in consideration. If you're going to be running a rack on the back of your RV or the back of your car, you don't need folding necessarily. I mean, it's, it's just wasted, and actually you'll get potentially a little bit of extra weight involved for the fact that you have now the, the hinge portions uh, have to be considered whenever they're engineering the bike and they weld it together so it's going to add a little bit more weight because of all that extra engineering and extra metal that's involved most of it's together uh, we got a little bit more to look at the tools that i use obviously when i put this together isn't the tools that come with it but this has got a pretty good toolkit from what i can tell we'll look at that in a second uh, the other thing that you want to uh, be definitely aware of um, I've done a lot of these, done a, done a lot of installs, and um, there's a couple of things. The light could potentially go down here on the fender. That's where almost all the lights go, except when you run a front rack. It's probably a good idea to put it up a little higher, like in this case, on the rack. That's why they include that nut and bolt on the rack. And it just puts the headlight out front further. The reason is, is we've had some in the past that with the bracket, and sometimes they change the brackets through their manufacturing process, uh, the light will hit the, the rack. Uh, the rack, not a very heavy rack, you see 13 kilograms, I'll have to type in here what that actually is, but this is what I want you to pay attention to. When you put the handlebars on, route the cable on the left side of the bike initially i thought you know it's not going to make a difference because it's coming up through the middle right here which they do a really good job hiding the cables in the frame but the way they have this wound up it does make a difference and that's why this is here that's why this hook is here so regardless if you have the front rack on there or not make sure that you uh, put the cable to the left of the bike up to the handlebars good looking bike so far but let's look at what else comes with it you can see here's for the front tire this is all stuff that came off the front tire not this this comes in the toolkit I don't Heidi had opened the toolkit and took a look at it and I don't think she realizes that's part of the toolkit so toolkit you got plenty of wrenches see there and all these allens this is for the screwdriver there the pedals that I still have to put on here, a couple of black wire ties, which those wire ties are going to be for securing the uh, light, uh, the wiring to the rack. Uh, a very nice manual, explains out everything, including the most important thing, the uh, display. And then your battery charger, which is a 2 amp charger, it's a 54.6 volt 2 amp charger. So let me put the pedals on here. Take a look at the bike, the display. I'll go through the settings um, off camera because they're explained very well in these manuals. We already know that. And uh, we'll get uh, Heidi's impressions on this, but 
I'd like to take this for a ride. I think it looks kind of cool. Heidi said uh, the handlebars remind her of a BMX bike, which I'll have to agree. But nice, huh? You got a uh, rack on the back. Now the rack says 25 kilograms on the back. For some reason I think that's 50 pounds. I don't know. But yeah, this is a nice looking bike. And it's not very heavy either. I was impressed with that. Just touching it, moving it around, lifting it up to put the front tire on, that kind of thing. Front shocks on it. No rear suspension, not a deal breaker, but uh, that seat is pretty plush, so hopefully that makes a difference. And of course, it has these big uh, four inch tires, these 20 by four tires, so that's going to make a difference on the ride, too. Just adjust your air pressure as you need. All right, let's get the pedals on and see what this thing's like. The rear light with the brake light is one of the brightest I've seen yet. Pretty sure the um, the headlight is pretty bright too. No headlight. Oh yeah, I see it. Does it fit you? Yeah, this is uh, just one of the easiest bikes to get on. <laughs> <laughs> You're out of shape. All right, let's see what you do. Oh, it's another throttle. Yeah. I'll have to say that it rode pretty smooth considering it don't have a rear suspension. Again, that comes with those big fat tires and then my fat body smashing them down to where they compress. But it's... uh. It's pretty zippy. Oh, that light's pretty bright. I can see that. I'm not sure why she's saying it's not bright. Maybe it's just I had it pointed wrong because uh, I'm sure you guys can see that light pretty easy, right? Easy to ride, huh? Very easy to ride. Nice brakes. Probably. Yeah, they are mechanical. The best. They're mechanical, but uh, I don't They're have a problem best. with them. Um, um, the light is bright. I don't care for this. I've never cared for this on any bike. Um, it's like right. It's like pushing a shopping cart at the uh, dollar store with the pole on it. Yeah. Because you can see it, and it doesn't follow where you're. What I don't care for is that you know if you put anything on here, you should keep it like below this yeah. height right here. Yeah. So that kind of you know because your handlebars when you turn it, go ahead and turn the handlebars. Well, I guess you could put something pretty big there. It just as long as it's not real tall. And you got the rear rack anyways. This is a nice bike. Yeah, and it fits you good. Yeah, it does. It does. Oh, even though I'm on my tippy toes, I still feel uh, real comfortable on it. Yeah, I like the way the rims look. They kind of, they're a five spoke, but they have a, like one side is wavy this way and the other side is wavy the other way. Yeah, it's it's kind of cool. hard to describe. It's a, it's just a, it's just different. It's just different. Yeah, this is pretty decent. So 750 watt motor, a uh, peak on this is like 960 or something like that. Uh, the weight on this thing isn't crazy. Um, you're talking about 70 pounds with the box, you know. So I'm thinking that it's probably in the 63 pound range, somewhere like it's that. Maybe even less. See if you can pick it up. See if I can pick it up. Try to grab that thing down there. Maybe that's more of a handle for you. Yeah. Yeah, I wouldn't want to carry it anywhere. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> but I, uh, the handlebar spacing is good. Um, it feels more comfortable than I thought. Okay, I'll have to say this, though. If you guys like to pedal a lot, you'll have to put your seat post up. That's going to take away, because look how long the stroke is here. But, yeah. um, you know, Heidi, when she pedals, just like I was, you know, the knees are up. But I could pedal just fine with this. It's just I don't like to pedal the bike. Um, there's four different colors on this. Um, this is, of course, the lightest, brightest color that we could come up with. I was concerned with um, getting another black bike, so you can get Onyx Black. Snow White, that's what this is. There is no pearl to it or anything like that, like our lasting way. This is just a, a plain white. You get Avocado Green and Heidi's Flamingo Pink. Could have got Flamingo Pink. That would look kind of funny. Yeah, it's a decent bike um 
I think the torque on it is more than I expected. Now it is a 48 volt battery and it's 13 amp hour. It says max speed's 25 and of course that all depends. The battery can be removed pretty easily as you see what Heidi's got there. It's locked in right now but um, you just pull it out and then you can charge it at, in the house or leave it on the bike. The charging port's on the side. The, the monitor or the display very easy to use I they all are like this I have yet to find but two e-bikes out of all the e-bikes we reviewed that the display is overly bright um, this one with the headlight on obviously is you know when you turn on the headlight it dims it so go ahead and push that left button for a couple seconds Okay, that turned off the headlight. It brightened it up a little, but still nothing compared to what, like I said, other than two, they've all been the same. Seven speed shifter. Uh, it's the entry level, turny. Uh, as far as assembly on this, I pointed out what to do with the cable there. Uh, the only other thing that um, usually you would have to do with some of these bikes is bolt this cage on this protective cage for the shifter. Uh, you don't have to do that with this one. They already do that for you. This is like a, a fold-up bike that they decided not to make folding, and I don't have a problem with that because I never plan on folding half the bikes that we got. So, what do you think overall? Okay. Who's who's? What kind of buyers for this one? Um, actually, somebody that has some knee problems because it is like really easy. It's one of the easiest bikes to get on. I mean. I'm short, but I'm a tall person. Yeah, Heidi's 5'4", if you guys don't know. Yeah, um, it doesn't go too fast. You can you can put the, you know, we have the pedal assist all the way up. We always do. You don't have to. You don't have to do that. Right. Um, so, I, yeah, I think you're right. I think somebody that's wanting to go a step through that has a problem with uh, their legs, their knees, they don't want to swing over. Move back here behind the fence. It was getting noisy by the road. Uh, I think that what I prefer a step through, any step through is uh, all the times that we were RVing, you know, uh, we mentioned this before, um, we don't, and we just prefer not to r drive our truck for errands to the gas station, uh, fast food, a lot, sometimes going out to eat, a lot of times going out to eat, especially down at the beach, yeah. uh, going to the beach. We didn't like taking our, in that case, our big uh f-350 crew cab long bed four by four and try to navigate some of these little places find parking uh, you might even have to pay for parking and uh this allows you to get to those perfect parking spaces but getting back to the step through we did a lot of shopping we did grocery shopping and we put all of our groceries on the back rack either on side baskets or up on top well, when you do that, guess what? If you've got a swing over to where you have to swing your foot over, you now have to not only clear the seat, which was hard enough, now you got to clear whatever you got back here, whatever basket or whatever you have back here, instead of having a step through. The, one of the things that the market wants to, to touch on and, and make clear that it's no longer a, a, a boy's bike, girl's bike situation. It's either a step through or it's not, um, or what they call a high step. So either a step through or a high step step through is the way to go guys i i mean it's just so much easier for everything um all except whenever you're trying to use one of those bike racks that clamp down from the top you'll have to get the accessory bar that goes across that allows it to clamp down uh, that way but other than that that's the only downfall and again if you're running a bike rack um why need a folding bike so the links are down in the description for this. I don't know if I have a discount code for this. I may. Um, click the, the link, though, and it'll take you to their site and uh, see what kind of discount they have versus the one that I have. See if they work in conjunction together. If I do have one, you might actually get even more off of their sale price, potentially. Uh, another good one from Ingway. Uh, we have not had a failure yet no. on an Ingway, and we have not had... A failure of a bike sent to us from Fing, uh, Ingway. Every single one of them has been a nice bike, very nice bike. Uh, like I said, out of all the bikes we reviewed, we have one Ingway bike that we've kept all along. And quite honestly, um, the battery's about the same, the tires are the same, uh, the speed's a little bit less. It does have a rear rack. 
the seats about the same the handlebars are the same the controllers the same so it's funny because this one has a lot of those check marks that uh, made it to where that other one stayed in our arsenal all this time as always we hope to see you out there bye bye